Hey, hey, you and good and good evening. This is Tiger. Welcome to my stream. Thank you, AJ, for moderating the stream, and thank you for the good evening that you put into the chat. I somehow have to start the streams differently when the game is taking so long for booting up. So I will just talk over the the starting music and tell you what we are going to do in the stream tonight. It is a follow-up on the stream that we had spontaneously during the week um, after um, a Volvo asked about one thing that we looked into and it was um, a bug hunting stream when we tried to find out what is wrong with the GP38-2s in the Horseshoe Curve DLC. And after the stream I played around a bit more and I think I figured out how to set up the consist of 5GP38-2s in a way so that you can actually use it more or less properly even with those weird things that are happening in the script. Here the disclaimer first. We are doing obviously computer games here and so don't try this at home and leave the real railway installations and trains alone so obviously you can try what we're doing in the computer game at home but not with the real trains and so on we are going to horseshoe curve that means i can activate the dlc and i wanted to do a service with this caption here there are not so many gp38-2 services and but might not be super bad because they take some time to accomplish one hour 12 they are rated and this is when you just start away without doing anything uh cd raider says ah come on what is what, what what is what is what is what is to complain about the ah come on I'm playing around with American freight locomotives. The first thing that I ever did in Train Sim World, starting in Sandpatch Grade, trying to figure out how to set them up for, um, for well, not really multi-unit use and and not distributed power because it is not distributed power for, for well, banking is obviously what we would call it, I guess. So what we have is a consist. More or less the same consist uh, that we had during Wednesday, yes. It is a consist with three GP38-2s at the, at the head of the train and two GP38-2s at the end of the train. And um, what would we do? Normally, when we get into a consist of that kind, might probably punch in the reverser switch on the three switches maybe we want to have some lights also ditch lights number lights on then obviously i want my alerter to be active for the brakes i would set the independent brakes to lead full application on the independent brake the red hand here shows us that we're getting air into the brake cylinders cut in the auto brake release the auto brake you can see the equalizing reservoir white hand on this meter here climbing to 90 psi and then we would expect slowly the brake pipe white hand on this gauge here go to 90 as well and we see hmm, it does not also at the end it more or less stays at 83 how so it is released it is cut in you have to check if any well other driver's brake valve along the train is interfering here let's check if the independent brake is doing what it is supposed to it gets a 62 or something brake pressure in the cylinder 
that is what we expect and since the three locomotives are connected directly we want to apply the independent brake on all three of them with our handle in the first locomotive this is why we set it to lead and the others other th other two to trail for the independent brake like here independent brake is released to trail yeah that is what it is supposed to be but now we see there are only like 20 pounds in the cylinders and also here even less only like almost less than 10 also the brake pipe cl climbed to 90 here did it go to 90? yeah of at least it went to 90 here or, uh, okay th we can live with that then let's see if <coughs> the, thir the th third thi thing that we need to do we want obviously not only to operate the independent brake for the locomotives that are interconnected with the handle at the one or in, in, in the cab that we are driving from we want to operate the whole automatic brake and the whole train with this one brake valve at the top of the train so including the two locomotives at the rear for the automatic brake and then what does the game do for the rear locomotives? We want to simulate the second driver, Hank, sitting here. And this guy is supposed to copy everything that we are doing at the front regarding the reverser, the throttle and the dynamic brake. For that, in Sandpark Great, we had to configure this cap accordingly, had to turn on those three switches because the simulated driver is actually using this stand here. We had to pu put in the reverser handle and then by using the banking com, it would carry over. The brake handle for all the non-driving caps should be in handle off and they should be cut out so that they do not interfere. And for the independent at the rear, it is a philosophical question that has been talked a lot in the forums at the time, whether you have to set it to trail at the leading rear or to lead. Both works. It depends on whether you want to give your simulated driver the ability to operate the independent brake on the two locomotives that are at the rear or not obviously the simulated driver is not operating them but if we want to operate them we can use the external camera and this handle to operate the independent brake on the rear ones so again does it work with the independent brake here goes to 60 for the lead at the rear this is what we want to have but the trailing at the rear stops at 30, even though the valve is set to trail. What is not what we want to have. Now that we are at the last locomotive in the consist, we can switch on the lights a bit. Dim is enough for the rear one and the number lights. And then let's see if our simulated driver is actually doing what he's supposed to. At the front we have the reverser in, we have the banking com off still, so we wouldn't turn it on. And now simulating the second driver we would radio the commands and the driver at the rear would copy it. Let's see if it works. Hmm, a put in a reverser handle, that is quite nice. Also those three switches have been set to on automatically in the script. Okay, so we don't need to do this ourselves, unlike sand pitch grade. But here, did you see that? When I turned on the banking com, the brake valve for the automatic brake was set to an initial reduction and the brake pipe reacted. It dropped from 90 to below 70, even though this brake valve is cut out. We have seen this in the video last week. 
we can actually operate the brake pipe with this cut out brake valve at the leading rear locomotive. This is not what we want to have. So we see problems with the automatic brake, with the independent brake. We've seen that the simulated driver has turned on those switches. What is good has put in a reverse handle. But let's see if it actually works with the simulated driver here. If I use my keyboard controls to set the reverser to forward on the front locomotive, we would expect this reverser handle on the leading rear to follow suit. And let's see what happens. It disappears. If I put it back to neutral, it is still not here. It has disappeared. So if I put my reverser to the front, now it is here. If I put it to neutral, it is here. If I put it to the front, it disappears. If I put it to neutral, it is not here anymore. If I put it to forward, it is here again. So this is a strange thing that is happening here. So our simulated driver is not really coping what we're doing with the, with the uh, reverse handle, but, but it's doing it only every second phase and in between he is taking it out of the locomotive. At least let's see now we have both and forward. Can we draw power at least? So I am using the keyboard controls to set the throttle to 2 and we can see it here on the meter. The locomotive is drawing power. So the banking works now. But it is a bit of a weird thing with the reverser here. So every time you move the reverser to to neutral it stays here. If you put it back into forward it disappears. If you put it back into neutral it is still not there and if you put it back into forward it is there again. So every time you want to use the reverse you have to do it twice as it seems to get this done well. Well, what, what we, we have seen that the independent brake does not really work as we wanted. We have seen that the simulated banking com does not really work as we wanted and the automatic brake is not working as we wanted entirely because we have seen that the... Let's take the reverser out again and the banking com off. Every time I turn on the banking com, now we are at the uh, lead rear, the brake valve gets set to initial reduction and it is actually applying an initial reduction. And we don't really want to have that. Putting in my reverser, got the reverser, putting it into forward, it disappears. And now it actually stays disappeared, not as it was before. Now I can move it back and forth and it does not. Now it reappears. Okay. Let's see how we can fix this. And then we have had the problem with the alerter that we cannot hear when we are driving from inside the cab. We can hear the alert warning sound only with the external cameras. Let's first try to fix the independent brake. Okay, that is obviously not the best place for this thing to sit with a new hut. Let's put it there, maybe. Well, what was the issue with the independent brake? lead at the first locomotive in the three locomotive set goes to 62 point, uh, pounds that is okay second locomotive set to trail what is supposed to this one is released and this red hand should also indicate 62 pounds but it doesn't only 20 
I have found out that you can fix this easily by setting it from trail 6 or 26 to lead and back to trail 6 or 26. Then it is actually reacting. In a way, it goes to 42 at least. And if we do that for all three locomotives here in our consist, first to lead and then the trail, we are actually getting a 62 pounds in the brake cylinders throughout our three locomotive at the front. So if we operate the handle Let's put it to 45%. We're getting 25 at the front, 25 at the second, 25 here. So without that, we would have the independent brake only at the first locomotive instead of on three locomotives at the front. And this is obviously making a big difference if you want to use the independent brake to actually hold your train in a gradient or wherever. Does that work on the rear locomotives as well? This is the rear end. This is the lead one. We set it to lead so that our simulated driver or being us with the external camera can use it here for application. It is not at 62. Because we have to toggle it here, trail 6, lead or dead, trail 6 or 26, and when then we have the 62 here. And the 62 here, so independent brake is fixed. Next thing is the weirdest one, the banking comb. We have seen that sometimes it is coping the reverser, sometimes it is coping only every second movement, sometimes it is only showing it if it is at the front and not if it is in neutral, then it shows it rem removed. The quick fix that you can find in the forums and so on will be press the banking com on before you do anything to the reverser, before you even put in the reverse handle. That is quite a good thing. It works out almost every time. If you have a scenario where you can't do this because the reverse is already in its slot, there are some, I think, especially when you're starting from this 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 coal loading uh, branch, then you have it already in. Then you need to fiddle around a bit. Move the reverser, turn it on and off and find out how the second locomotive or, or the rear locomotive at the end is reacting to it and use the external cameras to see if you have the reverser in forward on both ends then it normally should work that when using the throttle or the dynamic brake it should react dynamic brake I cannot really test when we're standing still but with the throttle it seems to work. Next thing is the automatic brake. What is the problem with the automatic brake? If we managed finally to turn on the banking com and have the simulated driver run our first locomotive at the rear, the script puts the automatic brake handle to initial reduction. Quick fix would be to put it to release, but this is maybe not what we want because it is not what this brake valve is supposed to be set to. It is supposed to be set to handle off because this locomotive is not operating the brake pipe, is not operating the automatic brake. So if we put it to handle off though, 
I will need to be cautious not to put it into emergency, put it into handle off, then we well we see it climbing a bit. Or if we release the independent brake at the end, we're getting it actually released here. But it is only standing at 80 here. We l released it probably only for the locomotives because the bail off function was working. Without the bail o bailing off here, we would probably have still some 20 pounds left in the brake cylinders. Brake pipe is not filling to 90. That the equalizing reservoir is not doing anything that is just as well because we are not using the brake valve, we don't use the equalizing re reservoir either. Also here with the automatic brake, the same thing worked for me that worked for the independent brake from cut out to freight and back to cut out. And after that eventually at least now we're getting 90 here and 90 at the rear, presumably. See if it is still climbing. It looks a bit as if it is climbing. It says 85. Is it on its way? I think it is. It is for some reason very, very slowly adapting even though at the front we get a reading reading from the end of train device say, say, telling us that at the end of the train we have a brake pipe pressure of 90 what is not really consistent with our locomotive here at the end of the train is telling us otherwise thing is we don't have an end of train device really at the end of the train because we have locomotives at the end of the train so we would not have an end of train device here and we're getting weird information, but 87 now, so we're getting now to the 90. After putting back the automatic brake handle to handle off, and then the cut out, what is the correct setting to freight and back to cut out to actually, actually make it work the correct setting. What I have found does not really interfere with anything. In sampage grade it was always important to switch off the radio fuse at the locomotives that are not supposed to receive any signals. Or is interesting if it is called radio and head of train device off. I think this would be the head of train device, no? Or is it that the head of train device that is connected with that fuse? At least the other one is not turned off. Okay. So now we have the correct setting on this brake valve. We have the correct pressure in the brake pipe throughout the train. So the automatic brake is working too. And the last thing that we had an issue with is the alerter. And how would we do that with the alerter? Well, problem is we cannot hear the alerter alarm when we are um, when we are driving with the internal cameras and this cannot be fixed so one fix would obviously be to hit the alerter like you would hit the CIFA button constantly so that you can't ever get in the situation where you're not operating any controls or the alert reset stick um, in the 60 seconds. Usually, I think those two lamps here on your speedometer should light up before the alerter actually actuates a penalty break, but they don't, they are just inert. And then you should get the audible alarm. It is quite short, it is only beep, 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 and just enough time to hit the alert to reset button and then you don't get 
um, a penalty break. So the only thing what I have found out or what I have found to fix that so that we can actually hear that alarm and not get a penalty break all the time is to drive with the external camera. In this position, for example, gives you the opportunity to see all the relevant dials and the signals. Driving this locomotive a bit like you would drive a steam engine, always like leaning out on the side, looking at the front. But with this setup, this is external camera 3, um, you don't miss the alerter sound. And then you can operate the consist even though there are some weird issues with the setup. So let's try if it actually works. We would have the independent brake on, the automatic brake released, and then we would try to draw some power. At the end, they are following suit. At the front, let's check if the other two are drawing power as well. Yes, this seems to work out just as we wanted to. We're getting restricted here on the signal, so not faster than 15 and always ready to stop. Release the independent. Let's see why we're getting the restricted, because we have to go through the switch with 15 here. And so we go. So this was the part with trying to figure out all the issues that we found in last week's stream. And now comes the chilled driving part. Forty it is as, as soon as the train is through the switch, but we are still running under the restricting aspect of the signal. At least I think it is a restricting aspect here in the Ax Conrail signal system, red over yellow on the two-headed signals.
and it is not a red over green what would be a medium clear or a red red over green what could be a slow clear it was a red over yellow this is why I'm staying at the 15 plus on side and we'll do that even when we're through the switch with the rear end of the train dimming our headlights because there is a train coming from the opposite direction it's 40 still lights can be switched back to bright the intermodal containers will probably not be blinded interesting situation if you're actually taking it seriously with the restricting speed with the train sitting on the other track we cannot really see very far so probably we would have to slow down to be able to stop within on-site distance now we can see more and can go a bit faster actually to the 15 that the restricting allows don't really know if there are any rules in the Norfolk Southern X Conrail signaling system that allow you to go back to a higher speed after you got a restricting signal so being out of interlockings I know that in the CSX system you have a bit of a higher speed when you're out of interlockings but it more or less holds true until you get the next signal not like in Germany where you would just leave the ensuing Weichenbereich and can go back to line speed But well, even there, if you have on-site there, it's usually until you get to the next main signal. And you're driving on Vorsicht signal to the next main signal, whole train, or at least 400 meters. gives us the opportunity to marvel at this long, long intermodal train that was coming in here. Ah, now the intermodal train can run again. And it's a long way to the next signal. Well, hey, we don't know why we got the restricted speed from the restricting signal.
as soon as we see a clear signal we can accelerate though Actually, I found some rules tell you that out of the interlockings you can accelerate to medium speed when you're running under restricting. But then you would probably rather get a slow approach. Slows you down to slow speed, then you come back to medium, and then you have to prepare to stop at the next signal. But this is not what we got, we got a restricting. And here it is, our clear signal, and we can go to line speed. What is 40 at the moment? Or was this not our signal? Was this for the track to the right? And this is our signal? Well, it was on the right side, yeah. Limited to 35 again. Not our problem, we're still slower than that. Stays at 35, or if I remember correctly, it was falling to 30. Further on. But it will go back to 40 in between first. This is a nice spot here on the road, on this route with this. Passing the bridge and the bridge on top of us. And driving with the external camera, you can totally see the super elevation here. Whoop, how the train is tilting almost along with the track. Allowed 40 beyond this point here. No, it is still 35 for freight trains.
nice thing about the freight services in this game is that you don't have a timetable pressuring you. This afternoon I played a service in the journey mode for Peak Forest. What is actually a nice DLC, a really nice DLC. But with the steam engines it is so hard to get anywhere close to the timetable. And on the freight services you can just go along through the endless forests. And no one is pressuring you if you turned off your radio. I obviously wouldn't do that. But even with the radio on, nobody is pressuring you. Clear skies for us. Approach slow signals for the other two lines. So the speed clock actually on the circle around the digital speed clock in the middle does not indicate the speed unlike the GP9 in Oakville subdivision for example but it seems to indicate the throttle setting from 0 to 8 with dots in between or will be half steps I have not found any rhyme nor reason for the fact that there are half steps in between the th throttle settings. So, what does the speed signs tell us? 7 even dropped to 30. That means we're too fast here. So, what I saw here on this line before was obviously a different path that has been changed after. Sad. I thought it would drop to 30. Well. It's only for this corner here, I think, that we are going down to floor 30. South Fork, we're passing with a faster speed. South Fork is the spot where the other branching line comes in. It's nice in this DLC that you have those branch lines in here, so the coal line is a bit annoying to drive actually because it is so slow in the end and with the weird brake physics of the dynamic brakes this 
can be a bit tedious, but I'm quite happy that it is in the DLC here. Climbing to 35 again. Now what would I give for a train length counter? So, to the right, those industrial... What does the manifest mean? This is um, a type of a train composition. Um, simply put, and I cannot put it any less simple CD radar, is that, we, that you have a mixed freight train with covered hoppers, hopper cars, box cars and so on, tank cars in between. So unlike an intermodal car, car uh, train or a tank car train where you only have cars of one type and this is a mixed one and um, I have seen in some timetables explanations that it also has some relevance for which train takes priority over, over the others. The classification as a manifest train. But I'm not sure if this is a thing that holds true for... the whole American railroad network or if this div differs within or between the different carriers. Still a speed limit coming up? No. <coughs> this tower here marks the spot and here you can go down the line to the coal branch. There is a bit of a yard before you get there. And then you get slowed down to 15 or something or 10 even at the end. And driving downhill with 10 or 15 miles with the dynamic brakes working in that weird way that they kick in with the first step quite harsh so that you cannot only apply some dynamics this is a bit of a switching on switching off door tooth breaking on the dynamic brake So, when we are through the junction and can accelerate to 45. Anything coming up speed limit wise? No. So, if anyone is wondering why we are driving with the external camera, this is because we cannot hear the alert or warning sound from the internal cameras. But on the external cameras, we can. So probably this screen is not for us. 
either. Hey, hey, Happy New Year, Spectre. Nice to see you on the chat. Really? I climbed to 15, good. Then we do accordingly. Now we're getting the position lights, green signals. So Spectre, what is your stance to the American freight services? Tedious and boring or soothing and beautiful? I like Cajon Post and Sandpatch, relaxing, that's what Spectre says, yeah. Well, Sandpatch was my first playground when I started playing this game, so this will always be something special for me. And I really like those old American diesel locomotives. The SD40 dash 2, the GP39 dash 2 oh 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 speeding Speeding. Second time that I've been talking. It was a steep learning curve because sometimes the trailing and the P locus were set up wrong by default. Yeah. This is what I spent the first 40 minutes in this stream. The thing, the nice thing was in, in, in Sandpatch Grade that you had to set them up all by yourself and you did not have a script that was confusing the settings for you. So Cajon Pass, the script works well you don't have to do a lot and um, here in horseshoe curve the script confuses at least as many things as it fixes for you so it is quite a challenge at least it has been a challenge for me to figure out how to get the brake systems working properly again after the script had done its thing but it can be done are we getting away from the 50? no, we're staying at the 50 At least from what we can see at the moment.
Horseshoe has great scenery except for cars driving on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> yep. Well, cars driving on the wrong side of the road, th those are things that I can totally live with. 50 for freight. And I, li I, I, I like the scenery very much in this DLC. I totally agree. So Skyhook can make scenery. But they always have a hard time making the locomotives. Maybe if we're lucky we're getting some snow. Heading for Galicin already. Galicin so sounds more like it was in Poland than in... What is it by the way? Pennsylvania where we are here? Didn't even look it up. Was that the reference to my favorite local DLC of all time? Not <laughs> it definitely was. <laughs> and their locals here in this DLC have those really weird brake physics on the dynamic brakes. But also with that I can live. Bunch. Signal kicked away the external camera. <laughs> yeah, Skyhawk and locomotives. They can make lawnmowers, by the way. So why not locomotives? Still 50. And we are already going full throttle uphill here, not reaching the 50. There was some bluish stuff in this hopper car. I hope I did not miss anything at the front. Oh, and I did. I blinded the poor driver of the train from the other direction. If it is actually a train coming from the other direction, I don't know. Maybe it is a train waiting here. Because we as a... Well, the other one is a manifest train as well. Do you like the coal mine section of the suit? I find it a bit boring. Yeah, I, I've talked about it when we were passing the South Fork Junction. I like it that it is in there and it is nice scenery, but it is the combination of the weird brake physics on the dynamic brakes and the low speed limit makes it quite tedious, I have to admit that. Because you really, especially when driving outbound to the mines. Or is it 
inbound when you're going more or less downhill and always have to slow down below the 15 and kick in the dynamics the dynamic takes a bit then it breaks really hard then you have to move them out again and so you are sawtoothing downhill with a limit of 15 and that takes some dedication I'm afraid but the scenery is great in that part as well especially there are there is a scenario I think when you're driving through the rain starting at the coal section need to figure out how to uh, beat the banking com script because at this point you have the reverse already in the slot so that you cannot hit the banking com button before you insert the reverser for the first time but it is possible take some fiddling and still 50 says the sign Real locos are still good. Dim the lights. Nice thing when, when you wait a bit before starting your service, you typically get much more traffic because all the other trains are stopped and are waiting for you to finally go on your journey and then you get the traffic of all the time that you waited extra sometimes at least so let's see if, if we can no we are getting a advance approach at the next signal flashing climbing position light translates to a flashing yellow advance approach means as a freight train at least we have to slow down to 40 at this signal and prepare to stop or get a restricting signal at the second signal from here Nevertheless, I want to try the alerter thing, not operating any controls for 60 seconds and then you should hear a beep 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 sound and I will hit the reset button because I don't want to get the penalty break. But you can only hear it when you're driving with the external camera, not on the inside. Weird, why did it not come? Did I not turn on my warning devices? No, they are on. Did I operate any control unwittingly? Unfortunately, we do not have that on console. Oh. That actually makes it a bit more difficult. So at 9.30 about... We should get... An alarm from the reverse... Uh, the alerter.
Ah, there it was. You heard the beep beep beep, and if you missed to hit the reset button, then you will get one or two seconds later. You will get the penalty break. While doing this, I missed the level crossing, didn't do my 14L sequence. Well, can't do everything. Obviously, you have to do everything. So why did I slow down to 30? Because the next signal is most probably an approach signal. In the position light version, it will be a climbing line, not flashing. And those signals we have to pass with a speed of 30. And be prepared to stop at the next signal then. Line speed is still 50. The 44 does not have an alerter on the console. Is that so? I think actually the 44 has a, um, a, a, a countdown that you can see on your computer screen here on the Norfolk Southern versions. Here's our approach signal. Now we can proceed with medium speed, meaning 30 miles, but be prepared to stop. Oh, you cannot activate it only with keyboard. I see. Well, that is extremely helpful. So, if I knew where the next signal was, I could prepare for stopping at it. I think it is actually at the point, I think it is called Kresin, where there are a couple of sidings and where you get lined up for passing the tunnels at Galizin before you go into the descent that takes you to the horseshoe curve proper So maybe let's fall the speed. To restricted restricted speed. Then we will be able to stop in front of the next signal. Most probably we're getting a restricted, but you never know. Maybe you actually have to stop at the signal. We're still in a quite decent incline, so we don't really need brakes. We just need to allow the gradient to do the slowing down for us. If I remember correctly, on other route you activated with the cab. The alerter, okay. I 
Well, in the PC world, most of the time you're activating the alerter by using the fuse for the warning devices. So 10 is definitely enough. Are the signals not here? I thought there were signals at Crescent. Maybe they are on the other end of the siding area. This is Crescent, I think. Does it say on the... No, it doesn't. And on the other side, you can see the sidings. Well, then the signals are on the other side. But hey, we're running on the approach condition, so nobody can expect us to rush it. It's 2.4 miles to Galicin. Oh, there are signals coming up. I knew it. Drawing distance is not enough. Ah, yeah. Now we can see it. It is a red over red over flashing yellow. What was that again? I forgot. It is a... I think it is a slow approach signal. Meaning that we have to go slow speed now at this signal. This is why we got an approach. And still have to prepare to stop at the signal that is next. But can go back to medium speed in the meantime if there is enough track in between. So 15 is the limit that the signal dictates, if I'm not reading it wrong. I should have looked at my own video explaining the X-Con rail signaling system used by Norfolk Southern on this route here. But red over red over flashing yellow, I think it is a slow approach. Yeah, on other routes you activate it with the cap signaling. That is sometimes true. You have one switch for all the warning devices, safety devices. And then there are some locomotives that have two switches. One for the alerter and one for the train control or cap signaling. But this is sometimes a bit, well, weird. So are we going over the switch now? There must be some reason for us to give us a slow approach. going across the switch. And I'm quite sure there is another signal bridge before you get into the tunnels at Galitzin.
So the speed limit is 15 coming from the switch. This is why the signaling slowed us down to slow speed. end of the train is still far away from the switch well since we are running under approach condition still slow approach I might want to check out what the next signal is Aha, uh -huh. now the rear locos are on the switch. That means... Technically... We are allowed to go back to medium speed now. That would be 30. But still be prepared to stop at the next signal. A route for lazy afternoons with a cup of coffee. Takes a while until the train has passed at that speed as I rode relaxing. Yes. A lazy afternoon or what I sometimes like to do after work, coming home, getting all your stuff done and then drive a route like this with an audiobook. What you can't do in real life, the thing with the audiobook, because you need to be, you need to be cautious and do not divert your attention away. But on the simulator, it is obviously okay. So signals are about here, so I won't accelerate to thirty. But more or less stay on the slow speed. Train from the other direction. Dim the lights to not blind the driver or the engineer. For someone relaxed I would die of boredom. <laughs> I know it's not your thing CD radar. American Freight. There is a bridge first before we get the signaling bridge. Well, I really enjoy handling those heavy trains. Shaving off one or two clicks on the speed clock. And having them roll over the switches. like dinosaurs or elephants maybe well we can accelerate a bit, grading is increasing here so we don't need to let the speed drop below the 15 I guess but are this is, is this signaling bridge that is coming up ahead no I think they are more in a curve to the right than on a curve to the left. There's the signaling bridge for the opposite direction. So we can actually enjoy the sun glistening through the trees. And the vegetation trees and the 
mist here. This looks nice. It just looks nice. So, are the signals on the other side? Let's quickly check. Oh, there are so many camera angles until you get out on the other side. Yes, there they are. Can we see what they show? We are still supposed to prepare to stop at this signal bridge. With that gradient it is probably not the hardest thing to stop the train, but still. Don't want to do an emergency brake application here. But maybe since the train from the op opposite direction has passed, maybe even the signals have cleared. But what we can see, the top one, it looks to me as if it was a red one in position light. And does it have anything underneath? That allows us to go. I think it has. Still hard to see, but if you compare the beam underneath the round top position light signal. I think it is lit, whereas the right one is not. And that will be a red over green being a medium clear, allowing us to pass it with 30. Yeah, that's what it is. On the right it is a stop signal, only rot, uh, rot, red over nothing, over dark. And on the left for us we have a red over green in the position light world allowing us to pass this signal with medium speed. And after the interlockings, if there are any, we can actually go back to line speed. What is 45? Or now it is 30. This is why the medium clear made sense. Both stopped us to 30. We're still on the incline. So we have to use quite a lot of power. There's a siding from Galitzin is coming in. And I guess about when we go into the tunnel. We have to prepare for slowing down our train because then we are grading and going into the descent. Because it's a narrow patch here, we are going on a single line. There is a second line for the opposite direction, but we can't see it at the moment. It is on the other end here. Right here. It is broken into two parts.
And this is why we're not actually going into a tunnel. The tunnel is for the opposite direction. Or do we have a tunnel as well? No, there is our tunnel. Obviously. And now we grade it on the locomotive. Can still have the throttle at 2 maybe because the center of mass is still on the other side of the summit. When we're coasting and gaining speed then we know the gra center of gravity is beyond the summit. And it looks like it is initial reduction. Unfortunately, we do not have instrument lights on our speed clock. What is a bit weird, so we have to use the cap lights to be able to read our speed clock. Initial reduction on the air brakes to see how much of it we need. Slowing down the train at the moment. I bailed off the brakes on the locomotive. Now the tunnel hit our external camera. Kicked it away. <coughs> Still losing speed. Even in a 2.1 gradient, but this is for the locomotive. Let's see how this develops as soon as the rest of the train is coming over the summit. And we now we're gaining speed even though the initial reduction is on. That means we can now go into the dynamics. We always have to wait the 10 seconds before turning on the dynamic brakes. After we have throttled down, now we're getting a lot of fog. Can turn off the cab lights again. I have already bailed off, so our brake cylinders at the loco are showing zero. Also for that it is important that your independent brake handle operates all three leading locos. Okay, we can stop it, control speed with the dynamic brakes and initial reduction. Well, I would have thought that on the rear end, to be able to use the dynamics properly, you would also have to bail off with the independent brake handle. This is what the simulated driver is not doing, uh, what we can do with the external camera. And then the dynamics on the rear locomotives would actually work properly. Now we are in the mist, getting a clear signal. Uh, it's always good to see and we don't need to worry. Approach signals and heavy fog. I'm traumatized by this from my Cajon Pass video. It's still 30. And it stays 30 until we are down the gradient, I guess. Now we cannot really take in the beautiful scenery because everything is sitting in heavy, heavy fog. 
fog on American freight that rings a bell, yes. But we can see we can control the speed properly with the dynamic brakes. I don't know if they are still so weird as they used to be or if they are only weird on the 44s. With initial reduction and the dynamics this works adequately I think. We are already counting down for the horseshoe curve. Probably we won't have too many spectators in this fog. But uh, but also this looks looks nice. I like those Norfolk Southern liveries with the horse. As a horse lover, obviously. This appeals to me. So the liveries might be actually the most beautiful in the game. But unfortunately we cannot see the nice scenery here due to the fact that the horseshoe curve is curved in the shape of a horseshoe you have a lot of actual scenery between the two ends of the shoe and this makes for a beautiful view when you're coming down the slope but we can't see is the vintage liveries are also nice the Spectre I have to admit I did not buy the vintage liveries are they worth it? I would pick them up in a sale I guess but so far they have not been really on sale on Epic Game Store at least Signal is giving us a green, that is good. In my opinion, yes, but waiting for a sale is a good idea. Yep. I've actually quite a lot of content that I have not touched yet. The New York Trent and stuff I wanted to look into with the Acela. Have not really played it. You should get product keys from DTG as a content creator. Very nice of you to say so. As an Epic Game Store customer, I would actually be happy if I was able to get any product keys at all. So far you cannot buy Epic Game Store content on the Dovetail Game Store, or Dovetail Store actually so far, only Steam keys. So this this puts us Epic Game Store people a bit in between the Steam PC players and the console people. Yeah, 
Yeah, but so far DTG did not show any real interest in what I am doing, so probably just because my channel is too small for that. Or maybe too boring. AJ is already asleep, I think. Otherwise I would have asked you, if you remember this guy who asked me very demandingly to turn on the normal HUD on my streams that reminded me that not everybody and every player well he is banned the CD Raider, yes he is but not befo because he asked me to turn on the HUD but before, because of what he wrote after I said I would not comply with what he wanted so, what kind of mood was that? <laughs> well, he dropped in, says, Can I choose the route? Can you turn on the hut? Can you switch from kilometers per hour to miles? And I said, Well, no, we're running in Switzerland and we're using kilometers per hour here. And I don't want to turn on the hut. And then he complained about the stream and AJ banned him for the use of obscenities. Yeah, enough said. Yeah, but I have to admit that it is not for everybody. Not everybody is as interested as you guys are and I am to look into things and try to understand what all the signals mean and what you would try to do. And make it a bit more complex than just W is for drive. I'm afraid we're not losing this fog anymore. How could you just send the Christmas music throughout? The <laughs> well, <laughs> I actually tuned it down. So that was only a very faint twinkling. And Asia said it was okay, but I think she just fell asleep during the video. No, she w she did actually not fall asleep. It was a prank, was it not with the Christmas music? Well, I thought, here we are at the horseshoe curve, by the way, and there are people taking photographs. In the fog. Oops, wrong camera. I should turn around instead of going to the other side. Well, yeah, but I like that that um, Rivet did this 
twinkling and music playing car. This is some of the stuff that only Rivet does. Also those buttons for a stop on demand on Arosa line and the departure signal that can be switched on by hand obviously with the external cameras. This I like a lot. It does not add so super much to the gameplay. But those are really nice gimmicks. That I would like to see more. So, I guess soonish. Oh, we are already in the part where we can go 35. Just meant to say, soon we will get to the part where we can go 35. And then the gradient will also lessen a bit. Still green signals. But soon we will get most probably some more restricting aspects as we are drawing closer to our stop at Altoona. Would be cool to have some passenger services on, on those hardcore freight routes. Actually, there are running some Amtrak trains here, no? Still green aspects. Oh, the sun is coming through the fog. Don't you want to clear away the fog a bit, sun? I would like to see Altoona. Where did the brake man go? Amtrak would be nice, yeah. Problem, I think it is that those Amtrak trains would just pass there without ever stopping. Hamburg Altona's CD radar. Yeah, I think. 
That was the mother to this city, Altoona in Hamburg, Altoona. <laughs> So, one last time, I guess, 1.9. And still green aspects. Let's see if we actually make it down the hill with initial application on the air brakes alone and without... Oh, here was another opportunity to do the 14L but I did not see any whistleboard And so far I did not notice that we were getting any wheel slips with our dynamic brakes. Sometimes when you're overdoing it with the dynamic brakes you see that this needle here is jumping like woof, woof, woof. Or indicates that the wheel slip protection system or something is kicking in even before you were getting wheel slips proper. Maybe we should slow down a bit, huh? There is a 25 restriction coming up, not signaled. See that the needle does not go into the red. Well, we can do this with the dynamics. Nice thing that we bailed off the dynamics, uh, the, the air brakes on the rear locos. So the dynamics at the back are working properly, keeping the train stretched. Still a green signal, but probably at the bridge or shortly past the bridge. The limit should drop. Is this the 25? It is the 25 here. At the same time, grading is lessening and the fog is lessening. Oh, look at this. This is Altoona.
Hamburg Altoona. So we will see if we have to lose our initial application of the air brake because we're losing too much speed or if we can just go to the stop like this. The gradient will not stop just before we get into the yard area and after that we probably want to stretch the train a bit. Actually we gained one more click so can just leave the air brakes on what is nice so I don't have to do a running release and finally we lost the fog two miles to go oh actually we're So now the gradient lessened to 0.4 on the local. That means we should lose more and more drag from the gradient. I guess I can lose the dynamics and now I will have to release probably uh, now we are losing the speed that we need so running release on the air brakes brake pipe is already back to 90 that worked fast still have almost 9,000 feet to go. That is too early for stretch braking, I guess. So I'll just have it coast into position until we get to a point where we want to slow down for the proper stop. Sir, no. It's not dropping below the 25, there is no yard limit. If we were supposed to go across a switch, I guess the signals would slow us down. Now ah, we're gaining a bit. Still a 0.4 gradient. So, that signal is an approach slow. The one on the left, this dwarf signal is for us, I guess. Can dim the lights running into the station, especially with a train to the left. So here the signal is on the left side of the track. Ascending over ascending on the dwarf is a yellow over yellow approach slow. So we will have to eventually slow down to 15. Using the air brakes to this, spreading off. In case we need the dynamics in addition, probably we do. Then we're bailing off at the rear as well. So we are at slow speed. No need to slow down any further.
this to the left is the service that we've... No, not the one that we fiddled about. It is one of the tank car services. Three locos at the front and tank cars. Okay, I need to release again, otherwise we will lose too much speed. Some throttle again, that's actually not so bad, it stretches the train at this point. Guess the next signals are... At this bridge, are they? I don't know. I guess the next one we get is a approach on the dwarf, it would be a slow approach. And then the stop signal. I know a bit more dynamics since we have them on the back as well. It will not bunch up the train too badly. Approaching the last thousand yards. Manage the speed with the dynamics alone. I guess with the initial application of the air brakes, it will be too hard, slowing us down too heavily. Probably not getting our slow signal anymore. 2000 feet. What is that on the ground? It's just bushes, right? Or some ground peeking through the ground. So, when we will, it will we activate? That's gravel and steel rails. <laughs> Those? No, those are bushes here. Well, I mustn't forget to activate the air brakes. Finally, 600 feet and the air brakes, I guess.
There's a stop dwarf signal coming up. Need to get the dynamics out so that I can stretch break in the end a bit. Don't want the train to stall. Power break to stretch the train. Okay. That's it. Yeah. I know CD Raider, you will never be a fan of American Freight. Chicago to E-Rail. Does anyone know what this E-Rail is? By the way, I tried to Google it, but I did not find it. It's one... <laughs> it's one step beyond derail, right? This E-Rail. Yeah. I don't think that we will be getting American Freight so soon again. Next week I hope to have another presentation. Derail, yes. <laughs> E-rail and derail. A derail can come in handy if two trains are about to collide. Then having a derail can <laughs> save them at a delay. Jan derail as always. Delay as always. Yeah, next 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 Sunday I think I will have a presentation again if I get around to do it. <laughs> Relay. <laughs> My dog is not doing so well, so I, I don't know what I have to do about this during the week and uh, of other things and nevertheless, maybe we will have a presentation. What did I do to my ditch lights? Where are they off? Do you have relays? I don't think I have relays. But somewhere I might have them. Why is the ditch light off? Is it only on when we're going? Ditch light control on. Did I put it to the short hood? No. Whatever! Probably not. Okay, the flashing at least works. Guys, thank you very much for bearing with me through this long and eventless journey on this beautiful DLC with the somewhat weird locomotives. And uh, see you next week. Probably we will do we, we will be doing some steam engines again on peak forests. If I get around to it, if not, something else. Thank you very much. Have a good time. Take care and see you around. <laughs>